Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is the Man in the High Castle, Season 3. Welcome back to the alternate reality where the Nazis won World War II, which, you know, sucks. More accurately, the Axis powers won World War II, because of course the Japanese control California. At the end of last season, Juliana Crane helped stop the nuking of San Francisco and was reunited with her dead sister, Trudy. Watch my Seasons 1 and 2 recap for more info on that. But yeah, Trudy was killed at the very beginning of the series. This is her parallel Earth doppelganger. They're hanging out in the neutral zone with the man in the high castle and his wife. Remember, he's been collecting the films from alternate realities showing the Nazis losing the war, and he knows that Juliana is a very important part in all of them. Juliana's learning to shoot, which helps her stop some Nazi assassins from killing them. So man in the high castle's going into deeper hiding. They say farewell for now. Now over in Berlin, Joe Blake has been enjoying some torture after getting caught up in his father's failed coup. To prove his loyalty to the party, Joe's gotta shoot his dad, and he doesn't really have a choice. So congrats, Joe, you're a full Nazi now. Now. They send him to the embassy in San Francisco as a trade attaché, but really he's an assassin here to kill Nazi defectors. Juliana and her sister also go to San Francisco to hang out with Trade Minister Tagomi. In the parallel world he traveled to, Juliana was his daughter-in-law, so they have a special connection. And he knows how to travel, so he helps Trudy get back to her. So both working the trade office in San Francisco, Joe and Juliana are reunited. They haven't seen each other since the end of season one, when Juliana trusted Joe and helped him escape the resistance. But it's awkward now. When they first met, they were just kind of Nazi and resistance, and now they're both full-blown Nazi and resistance. So they're both kind of using each other for information, but also they're in love. Now it's time for my favorite character name to say, Obergruppenfuhrer John Smith. But at the end of last season, he got a big promotion. They threw some extra letters in there. So life's pretty good for him, except his son, who just turned himself in to be euthanized because of his genetic disorder. John takes his son's death pretty hard, but his wife Helen takes it really hard. She sees a psychiatrist and kisses him, it's a whole thing, it doesn't matter. So John's pretty high up there now, but there's someone above him, it's Reich Marshal Rockwell. He's head of all Nazi North America. And working for him is J. Edgar Hoover. In our reality, he was head of the FBI for many years, and he's doing the same thing in this one. Rockwell doesn't like John getting promoted, so he has Hoover dig up all the dirty can on him. And there's plenty, like how John killed the doctor to hide his son's disorder, and then the doctor's widow had a fight with Helen, and Helen killed her. So Hoover knows everything, they bring bring John in for a meeting with the current Fuhrer, Himmler, himself. But at the last moment, Hoover betrays Rockwell. He's like, I don't know what evidence you're talking about. Yeah, John got to him first with some blackmail on him. So instead of John, it's Rockwell who's fired and later assassinated. But Himmler's no fool. He knows it's all true. He's like, John, I like you, man. I've been grooming you for high command. Get your stuff together, including your wife, who's been a bit of a wild card lately. So John's promoted to Reich Marshal of all North America. It's also fun to say, but not as much as Obergruppenfuhrer. Now, at the end, of last season, Man in the High Castle burned all the films, except for a select few he gave to Trade Minister Tagomi. Tagomi shows Juliana one that she's in of some secret Nazi facility somewhere, and Juliana actually remembers it. Yeah, she's accessing memories from her alternate lives. One night, she snoops through Joe's things to find out more about this facility in the Poconos, but also realizes he's an assassin targeting Tagomi. Yeah, Joe almost killed him the other night. He was just barely stopped. Joe's pretty mad to find her snooping. He's like, look, Jules, we can't beat the Nazis. We have to join them. He's gonna take take her in, but Juliana slashes his throat? What, did Juliana just kill Joe? Yeah, looks like it. Juliana seeks help from this smuggler, Liam. They met in the neutral zone, he helped get Trudy papers, and he's got a sexy Irish accent, so they had a flirtation going. But the Japanese are investigating Joe's murder, and suspect number one is Juliana Crane. Chief Inspector Kido's like, why is it always Juliana Crane? So there's a lot of heat on her, and crossing the border gets messy. Now somewhere in the neutral zone is a community of Catholics. That's not super illegal, they're just here to worship in peace, but turns out they're all secretly Jewish, and that is very illegal. And hanging out with them is Frank Fring. That's Juliana's ex-boyfriend who helped blow up the Kempe Thai office last season. Apparently he survived with some pretty bad burns. He's a pacifist now, but he's still helping the resistance with his anti-fascist paintings. So Juliana stops by, they're reunited. They just kiss once for old time's sake. They learn more about the Nazi secret facility. Yeah, it's a Stranger Things type dimensional portal. Mostly it just melts people, but some get sent through and Himmler's real excited about conquering the multiverse. So Juliana and Liam are going to stop it, but the border crossing is messy again. Elsewhere in the neutral zone is Robert Childen, still trying to collect and sell American artifacts. He's working with Ed, brought him in as a partner last season, and while in the neutral zone, Ed has found his own new partner, this guy named Jack. Anyway, they're doing pretty good, got a busload of artifacts, until one day they're robbed and left with nothing, except for John Wayne's belt buckle that Ed hid in his underwear. 
Long story short, best friends Ed and Frank are reunited. They travel the neutral zone, putting up Frank's pictures. It's a great time until they're found by Chief Inspector Keto. He very much wants justice for Frank's bomb attack. He brings Frank out to the desert where they have a heart to heart. Keto knows it's only because he killed Frank's sister and her family that drove Frank to bomb the building. But for now, honor demands that Frank is beheaded. Whoa. His death motivates the rest of the boys to go to San Francisco and keep spreading the good word. So in Pennsylvania, Liam introduces Juliana to some of his old resistance buddies. She shows a man in the high castle film to get everyone riled up. And now she's got her own crack team commando squad going to blow up the Nazi portal. Unfortunately, their mission fails and Juliana ends up captured. Also captured, by the way, is the man in the high castle, Hawthorne Abbotson. They finally got him, but he's spending his time in captivity just pretending to be crazy. Hey, remember Joe Blake's hot Nazi girlfriend, Nicole? She's in New York this season working for the Ministry of Propaganda and she meets a hot girl reporter there. Yeah, she's bisexual. They're at a popular lesbian club when it gets raided. She's like, whoa, it's okay. I'm the future of the Reich. It's fine. But Himmler's like, nah, it's not actually. You're being sent to a re-education camp. Anyway, the big campaign she was working on was Yar Null, Year Zero. The plan is to erase all American history and start fresh Nazi only. And the big culmination is the demolition of the Statue of Liberty. Oh, this might be too much for John Smith to handle. Remember, he was originally an American and all season he's been depressed because Nazism killed his son. So watch out for a John Smith redemption arc, especially because his family disappeared. Yeah, it was his oldest daughter's turn to get tested for the genetic thing, but his wife put a stop to that. She took the kids and ran. She's like, sorry, John, I'm not letting them kill any more of my kids. I'm leaving. But no time to process that because Himmler gets shot. Yeah, it was Liam and his sniper friend. They escaped the Poconos and took him out. We'll see if he survives or not and who's leading the Reich next season. For now, John talks to the man in the high castle about why only some people make it through the teleporter. He's never traveled himself, but he has a theory. You can only travel to alternate worlds if yourself is dead over there. So the Nazis marching an army through could never have worked anyway. But just then in the room next door, Juliana Crane, oh, boom, she travels out of there. What world she gonna end up in? We'll find out in the final season.